Hello, 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 and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host, Latavia, and back for another episode. It is a new week, and as you are listening to this, we are two days into February, which is also Black History Month. Um, it's always a... I celebrate Black History every day in my own way, but it's always great to, you know, see how others celebrate and to recognize all of the wonderful contributions that Black people, African Americans, people of the diaspora have contributed to this country as well as to the world. Unfortunately, some people always, they just always have to go a little too far and they tend to be a little extra, but we're going to focus on the positive and I am looking forward to just seeing what this year's Black History Month has to offer. And in thinking about that, um, just kind of like as I always start with something that I'm grateful for, what I'm grateful for today, in addition to, well, I actually have two things I want to talk about. One, uh, I just recently had to have my roof replaced, which was completely unexpected. And prior to like three months ago, I had no clue about anything related to roofs, but I'm grateful that I have homeowner's insurance and it was covered by or the replacement was covered by my insurance and so that is that was a big relief but that aside i am grateful to be a part of the five percent um more specifically uh the smaller three percent and when i say a part of the five percent i'm referring to the fact that five percent of attorneys are are african-american and um or minorities and i'm sorry they are it's, it's black people but even more specifically three percent of that um are women and i had the opportunity to be on a show called as the law turns last week i uh, was one of the i was a guest on that show and that is one of the focuses of their show is to raise awareness and to increase the percentage of minorities and, and women in the legal profession and kind of thinking of that and i think i talked about this in that last week's episode actually or maybe a previous one of just how i've always aspired to be a part of the talented 10. and so it's just like i'm grateful for that especially for one it was not easy uh, there aren't any other lawyers in my family at least not that i'm aware of but i Holding out hope, I think that we have, we will potentially have at least one more coming in the next few years. Um, I have a cousin who's interested in thinking about it. So, um, like I said, it's just, I am grateful to know that I have been blessed with the opportunity to, you know, even go to school, to have the opportunity to even think about being a lawyer, for that to be a realist, uh, be a, a realistic option for me. Because I know that that's not the case for many, and it definitely wasn't the case for most of my ancestors. Um, and in thinking of that, big part of, I guess I would say, in thinking back to the first memory I have of wanting to be an attorney was during the, so, you know, learning, it was third or fourth grade. If you ask my parents, they'll probably say when I was like seven. But I feel like I was a little older when at least that I can remember deciding yeah I want to be a lawyer I want to you know, I want to do this and my first memory was when I was learning about the civil rights movement and and specifically Thurgood Marshall um, just learning about him who he was and the fact that he was the first uh, black man to be appointed to the Supreme Court there was a time when I was like oh yes I want to be I want to be the female version of Thurgood Marshall. Little did I know then that he was a career tr career trial attorney, and that is, uh, as I got to law, as I got older, and then I got to law school, learned that hey, that's not the path that I want to take. But I do still uh, have great respect and appreciation for all of the work that he did and the doors that he opened. Um, and interestingly enough, last week, uh, President Biden announced that, well, I said prior to that, uh, was it Justin 
one of the Justice Breyer, I'm sorry, announced that he'll be retiring from the Supreme Court. And if you're not familiar, Supreme Court justices are appointed by the president. They have to be confirmed by Congress. But when you are appointed to the Supreme Court, it is a lifetime appointment. Um, and the Supreme Court is the highest court in the country. They're supposed to be one of the three parts of the, you know, our, our system in terms of the checks and balances. But as always, but definitely more so in recent years, it's Supreme Court has become very much political or politicized. And so, you know, the fact that we currently have a Democratic president and that he gets to select a new Supreme Court justice is big overall, but it's even bigger because, as I mentioned last week, Justice, jo oh, excuse me, President Biden announced that his pick for the Supreme Court or this next a uh, person that he picks or appoints is going to be a black woman or African-American female. And it's like crazy that in 2022, that is still a first or a big thing. So it's like on one hand, it's like, really, come on, we're still here. This is still something that's going to be a big deal. But also it is exciting to know that this is coming. And part of me is like, yeah, I don't want that position anymore, but it is great to know that in my lifetime, this will happen. And this is provided he keeps his word because he also said he was going to cancel student loan debt. And last I checked, that hasn't happened yet. But I'm still holding out hope for you, Joe. Uh, and I hope that, you know, that you are going to be a man of your word when it comes to when it comes time to actually appoint a nominee for the Supreme Court. Um, and kind of to that point, going back to, you know, the 5%, as much as I know that in the grand scheme, as I was, uh, preparing for, and even during the filming of the show last week and listening to the host talk, I realized that sometimes I forget that it is such a small percentage of, um, of the legal profession are minorities and are black people because once again I would say I consider it a privilege and a blessing that I went to North Carolina Central University School of Law for law school uh, which is a historically black college or historically black university in Durham North Carolina um, and one of the benefits of that is most I would say at least 90 percent of my classmates were black um, or or some other minority, and Durham happens to be a predominantly black city as well, and so, and then even after leaving Durham, moving to Maryland, I was in Prince, I was in Baltimore and Prince George's County, um, both have fairly large uh, black populations, and so my circle includes. You know, a little bit of every, in terms of professions, there's a variety, but a lot of my, a good number of my close friends also happen to be attorneys. And my network is full of black attorneys. And so I realize that sometimes I get, I guess in some respects, tunnel vision or kind of become, a, I forget that this is not the norm. Um, and just because I can name off more than five black attorneys, you know, that I have quick access to, that that's not the case for everyone. And that's not even the case for other attorneys or other minor and other attorneys who are minorities. And it certainly wasn't the case for me growing up. And so that's one of the things as I've talked about before that I just feel like a big part of my purpose or mission in life is to provide information and to help start conversations, it was just like, okay, yes, I do happen to know several African-American attorneys um, in a variety of, of uh, practice areas. But like I said, that is not the norm. And so it was a, a wake up call of sorts, I would say in terms of having that, con you know, being, we had a great conversation in general and I would definitely encourage you to check out um, as the law turns, they do live shows every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. 
Um, it's a great discussion and just a new perspective on all things legal and the legal profession and the law affects just about every aspect of life. And so I love what they're doing in the sense of presenting it in a new way, but touching on topics that are current topics and things that you, you know, are, that you are probably already thinking about or commenting on, but not thinking about the legal aspect of it. But like I said, being there and having that conversation, it was a wake up call in the sense of, oh, wow, it's, that's not the norm. So what can I do? to help contribute to um, increasing awareness as well as encouraging more people to join the legal profession. Sorry about that. The sun went down and my natural light went away. So I didn't want it to seem like I was sitting here in the dark. But as I mentioned, so like I said, I've just been thinking and I haven't come up with a solution yet um, other than I guess my first thought was, you know, I wanted to one, make people aware of that statistic and also share like i said uh the information about as the law turns and whenever i do i guess something that i've been doing without really being aware or thinking of it is there have been times when friends or family members or even acquaintances that i run into um they'll be like oh i need an do you know a turn an attorney who does this or do you know any attorneys in this area and nine times out of ten the person that I'm referring does happen to be a minority or more specifically a woman but that has been the, primarily because that's what my network consists of and that's who I know and so there have been times where someone will specifically ask for a black attorney or a woman attorney and so I do my best to you know provide that information but it's i it's something that i am i'm giving some thought in terms of what is something i can do i would say some bit more formal way of how i can help contribute to not just to providing information to the community but to also encourage more people to become involved engaged in the legal profession not necessarily just as lawyers or becoming judges, but even getting involved in different aspects of the criminal justice system um, of policy reform. And I often tell people when they do ask about law school or I'm thinking about going to law school or I want to do something in the law, like I always encourage people or remind people that just because you go to law school, it doesn't mean that you have to be a trial lawyer or you have to litigate or you have to be in court all the time. There are multiple types of lawyers. Like I said, the law touches just about every aspect of life. And so you can be an attorney and never go to court um, or never have to write briefs and memos, but it really just depends on what you're interested in. Um, I know people who went to law school and they don't practice. They went specifically for the education and the skill set. And they had no intention of practicing and or even becoming licensed like i said i know some people who they they knew from day one they were not taking the bar exam um or there's people who did take the bar exam or like i know some people who were interested in being sports agents uh they did the first year of law school because you they got uh what they felt like a good baseline understanding of, of the law and contract law and that helped them in terms of pursuing their career as a sports agent or within that area. Uh, believe it or not, social workers, case, you know, that's a big part of it, being involved locally with your school board, um, city council. All, there are so many different um, levels and aspects of of our legal system here in the country, like on the, the local state, as well as federal level or national level. So I guess my part right now is to have a conversation or encourage you to have a conversation amongst, your, well, with yourself. I realize I'm often encouraging people to have conversations with, your, with themselves. So clearly I don't think that that makes you crazy. I think it makes you insightful. 
and it helps to kind of work through some things but like I said encourage you to think about it as well as just having conversations with your friends and family about just what affects your day-to-day -day, um, during the episode like I said going back to as the law turns um, like I said I really enjoyed it if you couldn't tell and um, I love what they're doing but we were talking about the fact that New York has proposed legislation uh, that would limit uh, prosecutors ability to use uh, a rapper's lyrics against them in court um, because right now in New York and a lot of states and specifically here in Maryland I think as recent as 2019 there was a case where uh, it was matter of fact the Maryland Supreme Court or Court of Appeals I forget right now but they decided that in a specific case where it was a musician and specifically a rapper uh, was accused of murder um, and their lyrics from their song was used uh, by the prosecution to essentially justify or prove that he did commit the crime and the court essentially said yes this you know using the lyrics is allowed and it's not violating any rights so that can be problematic because music is is expression is a creative expression we do have freedom of speech and just because someone writes lyrics or raps or sings lyrics about something does not automatically mean that they lived that what they're writing about it could be you know a creative license um, there's plenty of songs that people someone else you know that there's someone wrote but another person sang or even with rappers not every rapper is writing their own lyrics there's ghost writers and so it's interesting it was interesting to talk about that because it's something that multiple people you know the masses consume and enjoy uh, music specifically hip-hop but not many people know or are thinking about how someone's art can be used against them and, and on multiple occasions unfortunately that has been the case um, so I am interested to see how things pan out with this bill in New York because if it is successful then that is a good sign that there's a possibility that other states will follow suit um, and they can use the the law that was passed in New York as precedent for it but that's like I said just an example of what someone else is doing and how I and I do feel fortunate that I was able to be a part of it and like I said just grateful grateful for the opportunities that I have been afforded and that I do get to call myself a, you know get to be among this five percent but I don't take it lightly I do take I take this title or you know my profession I take it serious in general but I also like I said I count it a blessing but also take it as I feel like I'm getting churchy, but almost like a mantle of because I have been blessed to be blessed, privileged to be in this position and to have been able to obtain this degree, this license, this experience. That is my responsibility to to share information, provide information to educate others and try to, you know, reach back and pull people up with me. So. I used to always joke, uh, well, shortly, while I was in law school and shortly after, I used to joke like, mm, this ain't what you want, don't do it, think twice. And I still feel that way to an extent, but I, I, the, the sentiment comes from a matter of make sure it's what you want to do and make sure you know what you're getting into. And I would say that about any profession or anything that you do because it's not it's not for the faint of heart and it is certainly not as I don't know how much TV or movies make it seem glamorous but I don't, or not as much um, I loved the show suits 
but that is not the way it really goes on a day-to-day -day, or at least not for everyone but that's another example of uh or the type of law they focus a lot more if you ever didn't watch the show suits um focused on this really big law firm in new york um they focus a lot mostly on corporate um well the main character did a lot of corporate law and so he was in court sometimes but the firm handled family law uh there was some criminal but they primarily like civil matters and it was very fast paced of course they were a big law firm very success successful so uh a lot of uh, fancy clothes, uh, flashy cars, things like that. So that's an example. And then I know most, well, not everyone, but a lot of people love Law and Order. That definitely focuses more on the criminal side. But there are some parts of the law that I would say get glamorized on TV or even in books. But there's a lot that goes on <laughs> behind the scenes um, before you get to court. Or even if it's not court, if it's just a matter of something more, more transactional standpoint, which is what I do, there's a lot of reading research that goes into it. It's an ongoing, ongoing thing. Um, like So although I'm out of school, I think it's the same way that doctors practice medicine. And hopefully they are continue. you know, they, I believe there's also requirements that they continue to educate themselves and build on their skills. It's the same in terms of the practice of law that you know we're required to continue our education whether it be in a formal way in terms of specific trainings or courses or just taking it upon ourselves to uh, learn about the laws related to a specific industry um, so for example i enjoy all things beauty and uh, health and wellness uh, and my sister is a cosmetologist and so i've I kind of take it, I've taken it upon myself to make sure I stay informed of just kind of the different industry standards and trends and things that are going on there so that I am aware of, hey, what's coming? What are the things that, the challenges that impact uh, someone in the cosmetology industry so that I know, okay, are there laws that are, what are the laws related to that? What are the re regulations from a national level, from a state level? Um, are there laws that are changing that are going to impact them and what are the essentially what are the things that they need so that I can respond to those and provide solutions um, same for someone who is a, a personal injury attorney you know they're making sure that they're abreast of all things insurance and what the different requirements are and rules of evidence things there so there's a lot of different moving parts um but it's just i think the some of the best advice i received when i was in school and trying to well actually it was before i got to college but because i had made it pretty clear i want to be a lawyer and was able to kind of meet some people meet a few people who either were or knew someone in law school or who, who was already an attorney and one of the things that was told to me was figure out what you enjoy and what you what you like what you're passionate about um, and that was in terms of deciding on a major for undergrad because there's no prerequisites in terms of a major for law school it's whatever you know whatever you did because the law touches everything and so I encourage people to do that whether you're looking to go to law school straight you know if you are thinking about becoming a lawyer and you're looking to go straight through then enjoy your undergrad experience as much as possible get as much as experience as you can whether it be in a specific in your major or just kind of general or extracurricular type of things uh, and if you're someone who you are already out of school and you're working in your profession before you decide <laughs> to stop working or even to go back and go back to school full-time or part-time think about what you want to do like what is this degree or this and you know and it's ultimately license like what is it going to do what doors is this going to open for me that are not that i can't open with the, my current credentials or and ask yourself is there another way um, or is this is 
this going to be the ultimate um, means to, you know, answer to what I want to do or the solution? Because like I said, it's for one, it's expensive and it's not getting any cheaper there. So there's no way around that. And then two, it is three years unless you do the, take the Kim Kardashian route, which I'm still not 100% sure exactly how that works. I know that the laws are different in California. Uh, but like I said, just give it some thought in terms of, hey, do if I if you've had the thought of I I like the law I think I could be a lawyer and and granted being persuasive or liking to argue is a component that in and of itself is not enough to make you a good attorney and so I've heard that so many times over the years of oh they're really you know they like to argue or they're really good at argument oh they should be an attorney that's a component but that is not the be all the end all because I know several people who like to argue but that does not mean that they're qualified to be an attorney um so like I said this is me trying to figure out what I can do to assist in raising awareness about the legal profession and encouraging people to get to learn as well as get involved and so that we can help increase that 5% slowly but surely. And even as I am, like I said, I haven't come up with it yet. I don't know the answer. But this is another aspect of me learning and accepting to trust the process. Although my impatience has been showing greatly lately just in different in different aspects of life. And so it's like it's a process it's a part of the process things take time and so no i don't have an answer today and i'm sure whether it be your interest in law or the legal profession um or whatever it may be if you don't have an answer today don't beat yourself up about it things take time and just do your best to enjoy it as you're figuring it out take it from me I know all too well that is easier said than done but it is something that I am practicing and learning literally every day and sometimes every hour uh, so remember that regardless of what it looks like or feels like right now in the end it is all working together for your good and it will all be good thank you for listening and until next time